Genshin Impact has a lot of issues and the 4.4 special program really lit a fire to kind of let a lot of that come to light. Whether you agree to it or not, it does not matter, but we're going to try and focus on one thing that appeared on the 4.4 special program and how that one single event could significantly improve Genshin Impact as a whole. And I am talking none other than this event right over here because the moment I saw this event being revealed, it instantly became the most anticipated event for me, even if Lantern Right was coming out in this patch. Now, I don't know the full details of this event outside of what was showcased, and it looks like it might be a bit of a two-parter where you're kind of a hilly churl or kind of going inside the minds of a hilly churl and kind of walking through the path and kind of just doing this thing before eventually leading up to this boss fight over here with this ginormous, oversized, weird food-wielding hilly churl that they sh are showing in co-op. And it looks like this boss fight might end up being a co-op only fight and we're going to focus on this co-op boss fight specifically because it brought memories to all the way back to patch 1.2 when dragon spine was basically just released and one particular event in dragon spine had us fighting a special cryo regis vine which also ended up rewarding us with the best event weapon ever the festering desire what was so good about this boss fight was that it was actually a lot of fun to do it in co-op and was essentially a raid boss fight or the closest thing to it that genshin impact could and has ever provided for us. It was so fun that to the point I was actually playing it after maxing out all the rewards, but also because I was trying to help some viewers and some people in my chat to max out their rewards as well. But because it was so fun, I just did it some more. And I am hoping that this new Hilly Trill boss fight is something very similar, but unfortunately, just like in 1.2, this Hilly Trill event will disappear possibly forever. And this brings back to one of the big issues that Genshin impact has and that is a lack of permanent content for end game players or in general and i think this upcoming event should be made into a permanent raid fight and here's how i think it should be implemented and if you have your own opinion or want to add more to what i am saying please feel free to leave a comment down below on how you would improve on my takes and while you're at it might as well hit that like button and subscribe button because maybe i will make more videos like this. Now, when it comes to permanent content, we will need something in the form of a reward to get players to keep playing the game loop. Something to strive for. And the easy solution for that is obviously Primo Gems. And if we were to implement Primo Gems, then boss raids would need to have a cycle or rotation on when farming those Primo Gems happen, similar to like Spiral Abyss. And there are two simple possibilities for that cycle. As I mentioned before, it could follow the same cycle as Spiral Abyss, which is twice every month month on the 1st and the 16th of the month and possibly just give a similar amount of primo gems in that case. The other cycle you could follow is by the patch. Now a patch is six weeks long usually so I would actually suggest that the cycle starts on the phases of a patch basically copying the banner rotations. Now this could be really good for the players because if they are wishing on a particular banner and they maybe lose their 50-50 or maybe they're just a little short on which Wishes, then they can rely on this particular event, farm it for a little bit, get the primo gems they need, and then they can complete their temple or give them a higher chance of getting that guaranteed after losing 50-50. So I think that would be really helpful overall. Now for a rotation of that length, if I were to put in an amount of primo gems, I think a temple would be fair. So 1600 primo gems would be actually fair, but that would require you to clear the hardest difficulty of a boss raid. Which which leads on to the next point, difficulty. Now, just like the events, I think a raid boss fight should have multiple levels of difficulty. And just so that you can get newer players tackling this event and getting a little bit of prizes and then harder difficulties for obviously the veteran players and the whales as well. I could see three to five different levels of difficulty, one being easy, and you get basically a participation amount of primo gems, something low, like maybe like 30 or something. And then you go move up to like a medium difficulty, which would probably just give you like 130 so that if you do easy and medium, you get a single pull out of it. Meanwhile, the next step up would be a harder difficult, would be a hard difficulty. And to kind of make the 1600 primo gems, it would be 1440. So then you get 1440, the 130 plus the 30 just to get the 1600. And yes, maybe a little annoying 
going, but you would have to maybe do all three difficulties to get it all, or maybe you can just jump straight to hard difficulty and I would check off um, all the previous ones and events generally do it that way. So it, the boss raids would probably do it like that as well. The fourth tier of difficulty would just be called very hard, which would probably maybe give you just another 10 pull if it was difficult enough. Now in this level of difficulty, you would probably need good coordination with your team or who you're co-oping. Um, it would probably be a level of difficulty where randomizing your co-op will maybe not work out because communication would be key more on that later and that would kind of just determine the very hard difficulty moving on a fifth difficulty could be impossible mode now this difficulty would be for the whales and would probably also not really work out for the randomizing co-op. And to make things a little bit more fun for the whales or the people that spend a ridiculous amount of money on the game, you could implement a ranking system for this difficulty. And at the end of each rotation, the top players get more rewards, but maybe not much, mostly for and possibly just for bragging rights. Definitely a pay to win level of difficulty now because they are filled with pay to win players or whales winning primo gems probably will not matter to them all that much so maybe just the bragging rights or maybe implementing some sort of other rewards that could make them uh tackle this difficulty although i feel like a lot of people will just go in for those bragging rights on the ranking system and the other side of things is that content creators that spend money on the game would probably just spend more money on the game just for the content for this and that could just be some pretty fun marketing on the youtube YouTube side of things and the streaming side of things so I think it's a win-win. The winners or the top winners could maybe even be featured in some sort of way. Again that would be a lot more incentive for whale content creators to tackle uh, this particular difficulty. And who knows maybe other prizes could be a guaranteed good artifact. I do not know how that could be implemented. Maybe a character weapon selector of some sort possibly if we want to go a little bit more crazy or maybe as it rotates there's like a special weapon you can get from that. I I don't know. It would really depend on how generous or exclusive Hoyoverse would want to be with the rewards. Now speaking of rotation, you would probably want multiple bosses to rotate around and once this Hilly Turtle event comes out we will have essentially just two to rotate around but you could add one new boss every other patch and then the patch in between you just like repeat the cycle something along those lines which also gives people time to develop a new boss and test it out on the patch where a new boss isn't released and as well as do some play testing and te uh, making fi fixes and adjustments on uh, the beta testing this would also allow Hoyoverse to make some changes and add buffs and debuffs that could be implemented in the rotations. All bosses should not be available each patch necessarily. It could just rotate so that rewards don't get bloated and that you can just focus on one boss for each patch or each time it rotates. And this could also add another RNG element which gacha games tend to like to implement so it's a win on their side. And as bosses get more released and get reruns or get reruns so to say you can make things more difficult with multiple bosses at once in one match either in separate stages or on the field at the same time later down the line as more bosses are releases you can then have some sort of a boss arena raid that you could do in co-op kind of like a boss rush but in co-op and more difficult and possibly more fun this could be implemented as a future expansion on boss raids or as a separate thing as a one-time event if they so choose that comes every now and then maybe an annual event in a particular region that kind of likes wars and battles which maybe could be like an arena in Notlin, something along those lines now i mentioned buffs and debuffs earlier and so this could be implemented in a way that's either similar to other battle events that we've had or maybe similar to abyss except since this is in a co-op mode we wouldn't have the opportunity to select which ones and which ones we don't at least for the deep off size of things the way I think this could be implemented is that each player can choose individual buffs for themselves so then each person has a different buff and if you coordinate some buffs could have a nice synergy with each other and maybe some buffs would 
not have good synergy with others. So if it's a randomized thing, you, some buffs could actually end up being a debuff for the whole team. And in harder difficulties, there will not be, you could just eliminate the buffs so that there is a harder level of difficulty. Same with the debuffs, maybe in the easier difficulties, there will not be any debuffs during each cycle. But in harder difficulties, there would be inclusion of debuffs just to make things even that much more harder. And debuffs would be set on each cycle per rotation. Another way to implement this is that on easier difficulties, you could have a permanent buff outside of a buff that you select as well. And it just turns into a debuff as you go to a higher difficulty. Now this is good and all, but if this was just implemented, as I just said, people would only want to do it just like in Abyss where they do it at the start or at the tail end before the rotation just to get the primo gems, call it a day and never touch it again until it rotates. And it would just kind of be the same rotation as at the end game for Genshin Impact is that you log in for a little bit, do the thing, log out, and you'd only play for a couple of minutes every now and then. So what are some reasons to make people do this boss raid even more? And that would be grinding. What would they grind? Well, they could grind for certain things, but I think something that would make sense, but would be a little crazy because Hoyoverse would be to grind for skins. Now I know skins is for multiple, for all games, makes them a lot of money because if you design well people are just going to simp for them and they will just purchase it but there are some games where there is an option to grind for skins by farming certain mats or getting loot boxes that work towards them getting a skin and I think raid bosses could be a way for Hoyoverse to implement this for because there's two things that Hoyoverse wants as a business and that is one to make money off of people and two people to play their game for x amount of time so that they can get so that they can show those numbers to potential sponsors to get sponsorships and so if we make skins something that you can grind that will be people playing them because there are going to be people that will want to do that and they can make it as grindy as they want they could even implement a thing where you can partially farm or grind for a skin or mats for a skin and if they farm for 50 percent of those mats they can pay off the rest something along like if you farm for 50 percent of the mats we will give you 40 percent off now this midpoint could actually be quite beneficial for hoyovers because you have people playing grinding it out for 50 percent of the mats required for the skin and then they still pay 60% of a skin afterwards. So then you're kind of getting the two things that a business wants, which is money and playtime. So I think grinding for skins could actually end up being very beneficial and could really help the free to play community, which ends up just being good PR. And we all know that Hoyoverse, or at least the Genjin side of Hoyoverse, could really use some good PR for once. And now bosses. Now, as I said, there is only two of these quote unquote raid bosses, but how do we implement more? What kind of, what should they be? How should they look like? And I don't think they need to be too creative with their designs. They don't have to be. They, it would definitely be nice if there was some creativity with some of these designs, but they don't always have to be that. You could really just take some of the enemies and just make them bigger and call it a day. That's really all they really need to do for design. I mean, just take the unusual hilly churl, which is like, a rare boss that you can find in the world that kind of represents the CEO of Hoyo as far as I'm concerned and just make him supersized and you can call it a day. Now the only thing that you do need to do is that you need to make the fight against these oversized monsters fun and creative and you implement that with stages as well as some creative quirks and attacks that these monsters could do that they don't usually do when they are in their normal size. Let's just take this unusual hilly churl as an example. When you fight it, it doesn't do too too much. It might throw a cabbage if you don't kill it in one hit. I usually do and then it kind of just runs away afterwards. So how would how would we do that in a boss raid stage? Well, a lot of the hilly churls end up just dancing and maybe the first stage could be just being really easy. It kind of moves around and it's dancing thing, maybe taunting us and we just attack it. And that could just be a really easy stage one. Stage two, it could start throwing ca large cabbages at us and we just have to like dodge it. It could just even be a stage where we are not supposed to do damage to it because it goes up to this platform, we can't reach it. And we just have to dodge for a set amount of time and it does a lot of damage to us. Or this could just be like one of those co-op moments where you actually need to have one ranged character or at least one ranged character hitting this hilly churl to do damage while everyone else has to just dodge. Maybe your shield users are there to just implement shields to your ranged characters and your ranged character is the one hitting it at a distance while we're also all trying to dodge cabbages. Another stage for this uh, unusual hilly churl could just be the suitcase it carries. Now with a large suitcase in hand, 
that could probably fit a character. So maybe a harder difficult um, stage would be that it traps one of the players in its suitcase. And now this stage is the uh, the rest of the three party members attacking the suitcase, trying to break it to free up this party member, while maybe also still dodging cabbages being thrown at it. And maybe there's a time limit to break the suitcase, because we all love time limits. And if it doesn't break when that suitcase is broken, then that player dies and now you're uh, a three-man team. Or maybe the person that's trapped is the one that has to like break free by attacking something inside of there just so that they're just not sitting there doing nothing watching their teammates do these things while the three members are fighting the hilly trail and it's kind of just something along those lines. I don't know. But to me, it doesn't seem too hard to think about if I was able to think about about this while taking a shower. Now we all know Hoyoverse likes to implement their skins and their events to story progression or story tie-ins or character development so it needs to all make sense. So how would this boss raid be implemented? Well let's take a look at the very first event from Dragon Spine where we had Albedo and Sucrose having to deal with this Cryo Regis Vine. Now with this unusual Cryo Regis Vine maybe just maybe because Albedo and Sucrose are researchers and they like to do their experiments maybe they're just further researching this Cryo Regis Vine and Continue the experiment on this Cryo Regis Vine, maybe to tie in for helping train the Knights of Favonius. And they are successful in their experiment in creating more, another Regis Vine like this, maybe the, uh, another Regis Vine like this, but maybe they made it too strong for the regular Knights of Favonius and that the only way to actually tackle this Regis Vine requires people with visions. And that could, that could kind of end up being like the event or the tie in for at least this specific boss and why this boss now keeps reappearing and they, in, instead of just completely canceling this training because regular soldiers can't handle it, it's something that people with visions now use for training because it's just that l level of difficulty. And that could kind of just be like stage one. And depending on what concentration of this dosage on this regivine consumes, it becomes stronger. The different levels are stronger and that's why you have different levels of difficulty. Something along those lines. And then the next stage of this would be that this ends up being a very successful way of training people with visions and so it gets shared to other regions and so other regions start implementing that and now there are more enemies more bosses to kind of deal with that and maybe going back on the cryo regis vine ex experiment maybe you just have the regular nets of favonius not able to write to deal with it and it kind of gets a little under control and then you just bring clee coming in and just setting off her bombs and destroying it and then that could be one good thing she does for once and then that could just be the realization that only people with visions can really handle an enemy like this. And so maybe this will not be something for regular soldiers, but all the Knights of Avonius that have a vision, this could be that their form of training. And why would they be training to some ex some sort of extreme levels? Well, maybe Varka has sent a message, a little ominous, warning them to be ready and that they need to be ready for at, at this particular level. And so they go to extreme levels and rely on Albedo and Sucrose to continue this experiment. And that's why they need the training. I don't, I don't know. That could just be something. Yeah, and so this ends up being very successful research and a way of trainings. And so this gets spread through the other regions and other regions start implementing this. And so now we have multiple regions, multiple implementing the same training regimen on people with visions, kind of like getting ready for a war. I don't know. Training it. And the traveler can be popping in every time this gets implemented as someone with experience and someone that's trustworthy in each region to kind of just help out for the first stage and that's kind of like that's kind of like the basic way of unlocking these raid bosses that gets continued and as more of these raid bosses appear now you can just have this like arena tournament because we all love tournament arcs in let's just say Notland for no good reason where you now have a boss raid version of this event happening annually in this arena in Notland and boom you have so much content for the future that way and as I said before you don't need to be too creative with the design you can just make them bigger if you so choose maybe you change their weapon and their armor or whatever of the of the enemy and you're and you're set you're basically just set you can even just use the current world bosses and make them stronger and more creative for these fights as well as another means okay now going back on skins now as more bosses would be implemented then you can kind of split off the mats required for each skin so say say with the cry regis vine again the only skins you can farm are characters that are in monstat so that this moment that would be jean d luke and barbara and Kali and Kaya, I believe. And so Cry Regis Vine, you can only grind for for that one. And maybe if there's multiple raid bosses 
in Mondstadt, then you kind of split it off. Made for the Cryo Regis Vine, you cannot farm for the Pyro character's skin. You have to fight something else. And then you make these mats for just these skins different for each character, so now there's another level of RNG involved and that will make people grind some more. Which would annoy them, but people that are desperate or are like committed to free to play will grind out those hours to get that skin. Trust me, I would be one of them. As long as you find a good balance on like how much you have to grind for a particular skin. Obviously for like Deluxe skin, which is a five star skin, you'd probably need more mats than say a four star skin. And that's kind of just what I wanted to bring up is like boss raids, permanent content. We need that. We need more permanent content. And I just gave one such example and that is raid bosses because I think they're fun. It provides a level of co-ops and then you can do it with your friends. If you're a content creator, you can do it with your chat. Have a lot of fun and for people that don't like to spend money on the game for cosmetics like me you have an opportunity to grind for skins or at least or at least partially grind for skins and then pay like a cheaper price and i don't think that's going to cause a lot if any of a loss of income for hoyoverse because there are people that are going to be too lazy to grind this out that were like on the fence and now they're just going to give in and then swipe you know and then a lot of people just aren't going to buy the skins because they don't want to spend money on cosmetics like me. But if they have an opportunity to get the skin and grind it out, they would definitely put a little bit of effort. And, and maybe the grinding is at a certain level where grinding 100% of the mats is too much, but grinding 50% of the mats and then paying 60% of that price is going to be worth it for them. And I would absolutely do it for like Ganyu and Shinha's skin. Grind out 50% of the maps and swipe for 60% of that price? I would be into that. That'd be, that'd be good for me. And at the end of the day, if I was able to think this up while having my shower thoughts how difficult would it be for hoya to think this up and then implement this to the game let me know in the comments down below what you think about this idea if you want to hear more ideas like this from me and until the next time adieu and goodbye